don't be distracted by shiny things when it refers to what's happening right now in Orlando. Well, the Old Testament said to stone homosexuals. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And then the New Testament abrogated that or suspended that practice. Okay? It didn't say that homosexual behavior was no longer a sin. But it said, Paul said, this is what some of you were and now you're clean. Now you're redeemed. All right? It's still a horrible sin. It's still a mortal sin according to ancient Christian Catholic Orthodox theology, okay? It's still a grievous sin, but it's, that's not the point right now. All of us are sinners, and all of us who are non-Muslims are in the same boat as far as Islam is concerned. We are all, put the words up for me, Dar al-Harb, the house of war. Sayyid Qutub, the Islamic theologian who is now dead, he was executed by the Egyptian government, he wrote, as so many Muslims have, that the world is divided into two. Dar al-Harb, house of war, house of infidels, and Dar al-Islam, the house of surrender, the house of Islam, the house of submission. We, who are non-Muslims, are in the house of war, and the house of Islam, Muslims, house of Islam, is commanded by Muhammad allegedly from Allah, to fight us until we either accept Islam or we pay the tax and we bow the knee in subjection to them. So if you and I are discussing gun control, if we're discussing, well, I wouldn't have been out at two in the morning in a gay bar, if we're, if we're focusing on any of those things, we've missed the point and tragically, we have been seduced by Obama and others into wasting a key learning moment. What we should be studying right now is what would Muhammad do? We should be studying the words of Muhammad. We should be looking at that passage. Put it up again, please. If someone just joined us, these two passages are from the most respected canonical sources in Islam. In other words, it is to them what the Bible is to Christianity. It's canonical. This is the real deal. Muhammad said to kill homosexuals, okay? And killing them randomly, murdering them, is a part of how Muhammad allowed his laws to be enforced. It doesn't have to be done by the state. It can be done by individuals. Just like individuals can go, individual Muslims can go and try and kill an apostate or kill infidels. Or Muhammad said, kill any Jew that comes under your power at one point to, to his men just unleashed random murders. So if we're focusing on debating whether or not we should have more guns or fewer guns, or whether bars like this should exist, or, you know, this guy was a homosexual and he, I can hear that, I can hear it. What they're going to say, if they haven't said it already, I haven't heard this, but I can hear it coming, that, that Islam's sexual repression and the community that he was in and, the, and what he grew up with made him feel so conflicted about his homosexuality that he snapped. And this is the result of him having stereotypical images thrust upon him about homosexuals and him feeling bad about himself because of what others said around him. He really was a victim who snapped. I can hear people saying it. If we're focusing on any of those things, we are missing the point. Whether you want to have no guns in the street or you want everyone carrying a sidearm, Islam has its sights set on you if you're a non-Muslim. Do you understand? Take yourself out of this window of time and put yourself back in the year 700 in North Egypt or in, uh, in North Africa, in Egypt. You're a Coptic Christian. You believe everyone should have a sword? Others of your family believe no one should have a sword. When the Muslims roll through and they burn down your church and they rape your wife and they steal your daughter to be a sex slave and they kill your sons or kidnap them to make them Janissaries, to make them Muslim soldiers, that's what you're thinking about. You're thinking about, oh my God, what is this? What has happened to us? This, is, this Islam thing is a threat to us. It's a horror. Your eye is on the ball at that point. And that's exactly what is not happening here. We've got to look at 
Islam, not these other issues, as important as they are, because it is Islam that is the ultimate threat to us. I'll be right back. Friend, this program is supported by friends like you who believe in what we are doing. We run a very tight ship. Thankfully, we are on over 130 stations across the country having tremendous impact. We get emails every day. We get letters in the mail. Not every day, but almost every day. We hear from people who love what we're doing. What people don't understand is that it's sort of expensive to produce a television show like this. It doesn't require earth-shattering funds, funds, but it, it does require financial help. So I am asking you, if you enjoy this program, throw us a 10 or a $20 bill every once in a while, or even a 50 or a $100 check. You see the address there on the screen. Your gifts are not tax deductible, by the way, because we wanna be able to say what we want to say regarding politics without the IRS telling us no. So if you like the program, I ask for your support.